Yesterday, a House committee decided to send a message to the Senate and the President on the issue of Syria. Lawmakers added a provision to the 2016 defense spending bill stating that, quote, Congress has a constitutional duty to debate and determine whether or not to authorize the use of military force. So, in other words, they're saying, all of you need to get your shit together. We've been at war with Syria for 10 months, and you still haven't declared war. You can't do that. So the provision was written by Representative Barbara Lee, and understand that it isn't enforceable, but it's basically a snarky way of prodding the Senate to do the right thing, to have the debate and to have the vote. So here's what Representative Lee said, quote, we must recognize that Congress has an important role to play in matters of war and peace. It's way past time to reassert Congress's role in war making. We can't allow this policy of endless war to continue. This amendment just says Congress has a constitutional duty to debate and determine whether to use military force against ISIS. A debate doing our job. That's all this amendment requires. Now here's my favorite part of the article in Huffington Post. They say, quote, Lee's amendment passed 29 to 22. Okay, so that's good. Its passage seemed to surprise the committee chairman, Representative Hal Rogers, who's a Republican of Kentucky, who initially held a voice vote and said that the amendment failed. Lee requested a, a record vote afterward, and it passed. So understand the irony there. We're at a point now in America where congressmen are surprised by a provision that tries to get the Senate to abide by the Constitution. And also a Republican's like, ah, oh, this crazy amendment couldn't have passed, I don't believe it. Wait a second, you guys are the party that always screams from the rooftops about the Constitution and how it's not debatable. We're here, well, here you have an amendment where all they're saying is, can we just follow the Constitution when it comes to war? And you're like, oh, crazy Looney Tunes lefty. It doesn't make any sense. What do you mean follow the Constitution? It's like we're living in the Twilight Zone. So if, you're, if you haven't kept track of it up to this point, we've been fighting in Syria for 10 months. We spent more than $2.1 billion during that time span. We participated in more than 4,000 airstrikes, and we sent 3,000 men to the ground in Syria and Iraq. They say, no, this it's not boots on the ground, though. It's not combat troops. It's just to help and do intelligence stuff and to train people. Right, 3,000 boots on the ground doesn't count as boots on the ground. I know. If China sent 3,000 to Alabama, we totally flip on that and say, what do you mean? They're just they're not there to do war. <laughs> but when we do it to other people, no, it doesn't count. That's not war. I know, the same way we're not doing war when we drone people in Pakistan and Yemen and Somalia. That's not war. We're just doing drones. What are you talking about? That's not war. So again, if uh, Iran started droning uh, Mississippi, would we say, it, it's not an all-out war. Come on, guys. Let's be serious here. I love our double standards that are just built into the system. But even with all of those things that we've done, the Senate hasn't even voted on it yet. And I'll tell you why they're doing this. The Republicans want to be able to blame the Democrats when the intervention in Syria fails. That's why they don't want to vote on it. They don't want to have their name associated with a failure of an intervention. But then also, the Democrats and Obama don't want to officially declare a war on their watch because then they started a war. Obama doesn't want to have that on his record that he went to war with Syria. So not declaring war is something that, that both sides in this case like. But again, here's the problem. That's unconstitutional! So the main issue is, look at the precedent you're setting, man. Putting aside the fact that this intervention isn't going to work, this intervention is dumb, it wastes money, and we could go on and on and on here. But the, the more important thing is, look at the precedent it sets. So now, when there's a president, Chris Christie or Paul Ryan or Marco Rubio or Dickface McAssington, the next Republican, now you've set up a system, Obama and the Democrats, where, you know, you've now made it debatable as to whether or not a president can just go to war without having any input whatsoever from Congress, any input from the Senate, even though that's what the Constitution says in Article 1, Section 8, under the enumerated powers, you need to get approval from them. Now you've made it so that, no, it's up to the president, and they can do whatever the fuck they want. Well then, you know, how far away are we from fascism right now? If the president can just go to war, do whatever the fuck they want, no time limits whatsoever, 
And, you know, nobody says, no, you have to come home. It's a sad thing, man. Unfortunately, with the Democrats and with Obama, we're at this place now where since they, feel, since they call themselves liberal Democrats, they think, well, that means we're the good guys, we're better than the Republicans, so therefore, if we end up doing Republican-like shit, shut the fuck up and look away, don't criticize us. Well, you and I both know if it was George Bush in Syria right now, and he's the one who was doing it without any declaration of war, liberals' hair would be on fire, and they'd be screaming, Constitution, 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 Constitution! Well, let's be objective, and let's be fair, and let's say that now when Obama's doing it. It's amazing how the Republicans always scream and yell and bitch and moan about how the Democrats suck and Obama's terrible and rein in his tyranny and all this nonsense on issues like Obamacare and the stimulus where he's not being tyrannical, but in an area where he actually is going to war without declaring a war. There, they're like, no, we're with him on that. He can do it and we don't even need to vote on it. When I read this story, my takeaway is apparently our entire system is completely broken.